So let's talk about Mighty Deathwing Terminators, Arrow Swift Ravenwing Bikers, and some sinister nightly space marines heading off to hunt the Fallen, with an overview of how to start a Dark Angels army for Warhammer 40k 10th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Dark Angels, and in this video I thought we'd go through a rough overview of how to start an army from a standing start, talking in turn about why you might want to collect a Dark Angels army in the first place, some thoughts and ideas as to planning an army and what sort of collection you might like, a bunch of ideas for first purchases and ways to expand the army both with value kits and some individual squads and units, and then finish up with a quick talk through the detachments in Codex Dark Angels, and a few example army lists, loads to talk about for the Knights of Caliban, so let's jump straight into it. First up, why might you want to collect a force of Dark Angels in the first place in Warhammer 40k? For the lore of the army, they are the first legion of space marines, the gene sons of the mighty warrior knight and strategist that is Lionel Johnson, the monster hunter of Caliban, often being referred to as the Unforgiven. They're a power armoured chapter of genetically modified superhuman space marines, and as with every chapter they have their own strengths and flaws, specific quirks and character, and a way of making war. The Dark Angels really exemplify a secret monastic knightly order, or very much hooded warriors and gaining forbidden knowledge when you get into the inner circle. Mighty warriors of the Horus Heresy, all very much dedicated to covering up the fall of half of their legion to the forces of chaos, and much of their chapter's organisation is dedicated to hunting down and eradicating their fallen battle brothers. The black-clad Arrow Swift Raven Wing of the second company track down their quarry, making use of bikes and speeders, and then call in the Deathwing Terminators of the first company, fighting in their iconic bone-coloured plate. They're one of the most dread and feared Terminator formations in the entire galaxy. In modern times, they fight up from the rock of shattered Caliban, and their Primarch has been returned to them after sleeping and recovering his wounds for many millennia questing forth into the Imperium Nihilus to bring down the forces of Chaos and Xenos. I feel like amongst the many Space Marine chapters out there, the Dark Angels definitely have a compelling backstory. For their miniature range, they've got access to the big Space Marine range, and they can field basically any miniature out of that. Generally good news, as with being the poster boys of Warhammer 40k, they get more love and updates compared with many other factions out there. Though on top of that, the Dark Angels get several unique options of their own, unique Terminators like the Deathwing Knights, unique bikes and speeders like the Ravenwing, their Primarch, plus a bunch of other units and characters. For conversions and characters, you might be able to find some Dark Angel themed things from their Horus Heresy range, though as we'll get on to later, I would bear in mind that a few of their older firstborn miniatures might have a slightly limited lifespan, some of the Ravenwing in particular. Taking a quick look through their miniatures, here we have some of their latest Deathwing sculpts, the Deathwing Knights on the left, and each of the chapter that can weather near any storm and are incredibly tanky. They're commanded by Grandmaster Belial on the right here, wielding the Sword of Silence. Here are the forces of the Ravenwing, a force of black armoured space marines, fighting from bikes, speeders and flyers. They're commanded by Samael on his jet bike on the bottom left, and they can field units like the Ravenwing Black Knight bikers on the top left, or the Landspeed of Vengeance on the bottom right, and have flyers like the Dark Talon on the top right, that one packing a stasis bomb to drop on at targets of opportunity, and keep them imprisoned until they can have interrogation by the chapter's interrogator chaplains. As mentioned, the Primarch of the Dark Angels, Lionel Johnson, has returned. He's one of only two lawless Primarchs at time of recording, alongside Rebute Gilliman. Really quite a cool model here, with his watches in the dark bearing relic gear and fighting with Fealty and the Emperor's Shield. They've got plenty of more standard things that aren't either part of the Deathwing or the Ravenwing, the Inner Circle Companions for some robed Dark Angels goodness, whispered to be redeemed fallen by some. And here on the bottom right is Chaplain Asmodai, his tender mercies will have near any fallen repenting in no time at all. As mentioned though, the Dark Angels have got all sorts of choice from other Space Marine units, maybe things with plasma are particularly interesting for them, given that they have an affinity with those weapons from the Dark Age. The Space Marine range is quite a big one, and you could certainly focus on their more like Green Wing sort of units, given that besides their quirks, there are in general a Codex chapter. Price-wise, I'd say it's generally good news for the Dark Angels compared with most armies in 40k, they do tend to be cheaper than most as Space Marines. Marine forces tend to have quite a lot of discount box sets and deals, which means it's not quite as hard to get a force of them on the table as some, particularly with big elite models that cost quite a lot of points. 
I feel like with a few more options open to them, and perhaps even more elite models than some Space Marines, the Dark Angels might be slightly better than most. Terminators tend to be at least okay in terms of points per money invested, and they are also one of the chapters with access to their Primarch as well, who can fill quite a chunk of points for the money that you pay for him. For gameplay, you can get the current rules for the Dark Angels between Codex Space Marines and Codex Supplement Dark Angels. The Space Marine Codex has all the rules for the generic units for the faction, things like Intercessors, Hellblasters and the Redemptor Dreadnought, whereas the Codex Supplement has everything for their special characters and unique squads, things like, say, Master Lazarus, the Deathwing Knights or the Ravenwing Dark Talon. This is a bit unfortunate though that if you want the complete Dark Angels rules, you're going to be paying more than most though. For overall playstyle, they really have varied over the years, with the different flavours of the Dark Angels all having their four at one point. In past editions, we've seen things like really heavy Deathwing Terminator armies, just marching up to the enemy, tanking all damage and hitting back hard. Big Ravenwing bike spam with loads of units able to dodge out of enemy fire and using some crafty tricks, or armies that go heavy on firepower and they're more Greenwing sort of units. You can absolutely mix and match between the three. You could have elements of bikes, terminators and firepower within the same force. At the moment I feel like that might be one of the better ways to go. Certainly prior to the Codex, quite a lot of Dark Angels forces were going heavy on the more generic Space Marine units with a lot of green Dark Angels as opposed to their unique wings. Realistically though, they can play in just about every playstyle that Codex Space Marines has to offer. You could make infiltration forces with the Vanguard Spearhead or Balanced Gladius Tactical Forces. Having a choice between seven Codex Space Marine detachments and three Dark Angels ones, they currently have more detachment choice than any other army in the game right now. In terms of actual power level, uh, for the Codex at least, that still kind of remains to be seen. We're still waiting on some points costs for their unique unit, though prior to the Codex it's often been just playing with more generic Codex Space Marine units, maybe with just a few limited Dark Angels things like Azrael tacked on. And since the last balance day is late at time recording, the standard Space Marines have been kind of weak, which isn't really great for the Dark Angels point of view. Still though, I certainly wouldn't get hung up on that. Games Workshop changes points and rules all the time to make things stronger or weaker. Things generally cycle around to be better or worse. In any case, if you like the idea of a monastic Space Marine army, packing some of the most powerful Terminators in the galaxy, and a fun range of unique models with loads of choice, the Dark Angels might be for you. If you do choose to make an army of the Force of the Dark Angels, there's plenty of places that you could get other info on them. Perhaps a fairly obvious place to start is to pick up the Codex for them. That does have a general overview for the lore, plus all of the current unit profiles, which is a pretty reasonable place to start. A fair bit in there to digest for someone completely new to the army. For messing around with army lists, you could check out Battlescribe, New Recruits, or Warpedia, or Games Workshop's own app. There are other places that you could access rules and build army lists. If you do have access to lots of rules but no models yet, you could think about Tabletop Simulator or proxying to test the models out in-game before you actually drop loads of money on an army. Might not be the worst idea just to know that you like the feel of them when you're playing with them. Here on YouTube, there's loads of content as well. I've made a Dark Angels Codex Overview video, which I'll link down in the video description, and a few other things like a video on the Deathwing and the Inner Circle Companions, amongst others. Feel free to check out those. There's massive amounts of Dark Angel content out there on other channels, though. Battle reports to see them in play. Painting guides to get an idea for how you might want to get paint on your miniatures. And absolutely tons of lore content to learn more about the chapter and how they fight and act. Dark Angels also have subreddits, discords and Facebook pages as well. Can be great places just to imbibe a bit of discussion from other collectors out there. Maybe ask a few basic questions to people who have had the army for a while. Well worth just checking in and following along a bit to see what sort of thing as fellow collectors are interested in. Finally, if you did want something to read, there's a book called Lion, Son of the Forest by Mike Brooks, which really delves a bit more into Lionel Johnson's character in the current setting of Warhammer 40k. It expands a bit on his relationship with the Fallen, one of the central themes and conflicts for the chapter. Plenty of options in immersing yourself in Dark Angels content and lore, but otherwise turning our attention to the actual planning of a 40k army, it might well be worth planning out a rough 1000 point or 2000 point army list, again likely using Battlescribe, New Recruits or maybe Warhammer's app, just to give you a very rough idea as to what sort of force of space marines you might be looking at, and a few ideas for the first things that you might want to get together. Throughout quite a bit of the rest of the video, we'll talk through a few of their units specifically, 
and some of the options for things to add. I feel like perhaps the most common way of doing things for collecting an army in Warhammer 40k is literally just to take a look at the army's units and just add things incrementally. Maybe a bit of a balance between models that you find really cool. Perhaps some units that you think might be staple units in your armies and use day in day out. Maybe a few things like helpful scouts to do objectives or some basic foot troops. And then some things that are maybe kind of helpful for breaking things in game. Big heavy damage dealers. Otherwise though you could definitely go with options of going for a Dark Angels army of some particular theme. You could decide that you are literally doing a Dark Angels Deathwing army and go all out on Terminators, Dreadnoughts, Land Raiders, that kind of thing. Technically now the veteran units like the Blade Guard also accounted in the Deathwing ranks. It did used to be almost entirely Terminators before. You could do a Ravenwing army with a whole bunch of Outriders, Black Knights and Storm Speeders and things. Maybe the Chaplain on Bikes from the Core Codex. Or focus on a more green Dark Angels army. Perhaps having just limited amounts of the Deathwing and Ravenwing in support if you want. If you wanted to stick to a bit of Dark Angels theming, they quite like their plasma weapons. Something they're known to have in abundance compared with some other chapters. You could certainly just mainly collect to gameplay as well. Maybe try and make a force that works well for one of the core Space Marine detachments or the Unforgiven Task Force. In general, more optimised armies tend to have at least some objective holders, some big primary damage dealers, and some fast-moving units to deep strike around and do missions. Plenty of interesting options for making an effective force of Dark Angels on the board. I did briefly touch on it earlier, but when you're planning out an army of things that you might want, I would bear in mind that a couple of Ravenwing kits might have slightly less lifespan compared with some of the others, at least before they're replaced by new sculpts of models. In 10th edition, Dark Angels have essentially had a half army refresh pretty much. New Terminators, Belial and an upgrade sprue and a few characters. But it's kind of notable the things that weren't either updated or replaced. Namely Samael and the Black Knights of the Ravenwing. Maybe the Lamb Speed of Vengeance and Ezekiel the Librarian. I think at the moment that these are odds on to be seen in an update for the Dark Angels coming next edition of the game. 11th edition Warhammer 40k, which is admittedly really quite a long way off now. Given Games Workshop's usual time frame for model releases and book releases, it will probably be somewhere in the bracket of around 3-5 to five years. Either way, a fair bit off in the future, but they will have some new sculpts at some point. I feel like I will just bear that time horizon in mind. It is kind of rough. Admittedly, that's absolutely loads of time to collect an army, paint it up, and get loads of games in on the tabletop. So I wouldn't really let it put you off if that's what you want. But particularly for people who are sure they're going to be in this for the very long game, it might just make a bit of sense to skew a little bit more towards the more recent sculpts as they're far less likely to get replaced. Finally, for the broad strokes of planning an army, there's the delicate business of getting paint onto models. I'd likely think about painting up a test model fairly early in the process. I'd probably go for something basic like a standard Space Marine Intercessor or Assault Intercessor. Something to realise that iconic green colour scheme on. Unless you're doing something a bit more out there like going for one of their successor chapters or even inventing one of your own. Though if you're absolutely certain that you're collecting a pure Deathwing or Ravenwing force, maybe something like a standard Deathwing Terminator or an Outrider might be a more appropriate choice. My first port of call for a bit of inspiration would be to take a look at the painting guides online and here on YouTube. Typically Dark Angels do have their three colour schemes, the more dark green of the core of the chapter, maybe with some red guns and weapons, the bone colour plate of the Deathwing and the black of the Ravenwing. There's plenty of options for how you could realise all three of those schemes, various techniques like contrast paints, dry brushing, or perhaps hard edge highlighting. I'd likely take a look at a few examples of people painting miniatures that you might like, and do your own twist on one of the colour schemes, maybe adapting it for the exact techniques that you're using, or changing up some colours if you'd like them a bit better. For chapter iconography and details, plenty of the kits come with some transfer sheets, where you might be able to get their logos on the shoulder pads if needed, Otherwise there are a couple of options for upgrade sprues with the moulded details or some 3D printing creators that have also made some that will be fairly appropriate for the Dark Angels. A few different ways that you could have sculpted details on the shoulder pads fairly easily. Moving on to the exciting bit though and let's talk about miniature purchases. Personally if I were jumping into a Space Marine army of just about any stripe I'd likely start with one of the Space Marine discount sets or failing that maybe a basic unit for whatever force that you're playing with. As mentioned maybe just some standard intercessors to get some troops on the board and test out your colour scheme. Or maybe some terminators if you go in Deathwing. 
That could be one way just to dip a toe in the faction. Though otherwise, for discount boxes, I'd probably go for either one of the starter sets to build the combat patrol for space marines, the marines half of the leviathan box set, or perhaps one of the combat patrols. Dark angels do have a new one. Starting out with combat patrol space marines, these are the miniatures that you get. Five terminators, some infernus marines with the flamethrowers, and a couple of terminator characters. I feel like it's a particularly good force for the dark angels given that you get two Terminator characters and some standard Terminators on the board, all very appropriate for Deathwing. I just bear in mind that the Terminators are monoposed miniatures, so you get the Assault Cannon as opposed to the Cyclone Missile Launcher for the Heavy Weapon if you wanted that. You get 435 points of Marines here, though so bear in mind that you don't actually want to get this from the standard Space Marine Combat Patrol box. I do like to repeat this a bit on the channel. But basically, if you want Combat Patrol Space Marines, it is directly cheaper to pick up the 40k starter set that's pictured here, plus buy the Terminator Librarian separately. If you do that, it comes to directly less than buying the Combat Patrol separately. Plus, you just get a whole load of Tyranny miniatures randomly included that you might be able to sell, trade, or just paint up as a painting project. The Ultimate Starter Set is another very viable option. That one's £125, and you'd want to get that if you wanted the terrain that that came with plus the small core rulebook. The other option for those models is to acquire them as part of the Leviathan box set. This was the launch box for 10th edition, and if you can split it with a Tyranid Collector, it's pretty easily the single best money per models deal in recent times for Space Marines. Loads of stuff including all the above stuff, plus more Infernus Marines, Stern Guard, and a big Ballistus Dreadnought. It's out of stock on the Warhammer web store at the moment, though some third-party shops still have some left around the world. In the UK, Element Games still has it, £150 and links down in the video description, one of the slightly few places where you can order it online now. Otherwise, when talking about discount deals for the Dark Angels, there's also Combat Patrol Dark Angels itself, which I think is another fairly reasonable starting point. This one gets you a Gravis Captain, 5 Hellblasters with the Plasma, 3 Blade Guard Veterans, and 10 regular Intercessors, plus 2 of the older style Primaris Upgrade Sprues, for a few shoulder pads and some transfers. This one gets you around about 465 points on the board. Kind of okay for combat patrols, and you get that for £95, €125, Euros, or $160. A discount of around about 20% on the models bought separately, not including the upgrade sprues depending on how much you value them. Initial reactions to this one were a bit muted, though I still think it's fairly good as a slightly more generic Marines combat patrol force. The two main criticisms of it is that it doesn't actually have any whole unique Dark Angels models here, it's all generic Space Marine stuff. Not that that's absolutely awful for collecting the faction though to be fair. And the other slightly weird thing is that you get a Gravis Captain in here and then no squad for him to lead, kind of incentivizing you to pick up some aggressors or something elsewhere to make him worth it. This is the one with the Combat Patrol rules in Codex Dark Angels though, so if you wanted to play the rules for that in that particular game mode, then that's one advantage of this set I guess. When you're buying Warhammer 40k miniatures, I'd certainly bear in mind the different places in which you can do so. Direct from Games Workshop's Warhammer web store is the most reliable but also the most expensive. Depending on where you live in the world, my first port of call would be either local gaming stores or online discount retailers offering the exact same kits that Games Workshop officially supplies them, but with often fairly substantial discounts on what you might pay Games Workshop full price for. There are absolutely loads of them out there, though I do have some channel affiliate ones linked in the video description, Element Games at 15% off in the UK, Gap Games at 21% off in Australia, Fenris Workshop at 10% off, plus the loyalty program in Canada, and the excellent war game portal in the USA at 15% off there. If you were sure that you're picking up some new Warhammer models, then I'd go through one of these as the way that I would do them. If you did happen to use these particular ones, after clicking the links in the video description, a small amount goes to help support all specs tactics and keep these videos coming. It can just be a way to help support if you were sure that you were going to buy something anyway. For new plastic kits, that's the way I'd go, but I'd certainly bear in mind that there's other options as well. The second hand market could be worth a look with lots of Space Marine players out there. You often get their kits come up very regularly on eBay and you might be able to land things at a discount there. Though obviously quality could be variable. Some people don't look after their models as well as others. And this day and age 3D printing is a more and more credible option. Lots of great alternative sculpts for Space Marines out there. And plenty of aesthetic upgrades and parts that could maybe give your force a little bit more of a Dark Angels flair. 
Next up, I'll just mention a couple of out of production box sets. The older Combat Patrol box set for Dark Angels is the one that's just gone out of production. Inceptors, a Redemptor Dreadnought, five Intercessors, and a Chaplain plus the upgrade sprue. Again, standard Combat Patrol price in this one, and if you can find it at some sort of semblance of its previous price, I feel like a few people might jump at that. The Redemptor Dreadnought in particular is quite a powerhouse Space Marine kit. Otherwise, in very recent times as well, there's also been the Deathwing Assault box set, Belial, 5 Deathwing Knights, 10 Terminators, and then Codex Dark Angels plus the data sheet cards, and then you upgrade Sprue as well to give the Terminators a bit more Unforgiven flair. This one was quite recent as the launch box set for the Dark Angels 10th edition Codex, but again it's only helpful if you can find it at some sort of semblance of what it was originally sold for. If not, you might well be better off just picking up the exact kits that you wanted individually, as opposed to going for a discount deal that isn't really a discount anymore. In general, it might not be the easiest to find these ones, as Games Workshop did really underproduce these. They sold out very fast. Otherwise, beyond discount starter sets, I wanted to focus on just a few other kits that you might find more interesting at starting out Dark Angels. These ones listed here are just a few that I'd consider worth looking at at time of recording, and might be other possibilities for slightly earlier buys, depending on the exact style of army that you're wanting. First off, I think it's worth mentioning the Primarch himself, kind of a big event in 40k model and lore releases when he was shown off last year. Lionel Johnson is £42.50, €55 Euros or $70, though less than this with the discount retailers in the vid description, as always. Generally, he was quite well received as a centerpiece miniature, and perhaps a particular note within Space Marine armies, the two Primarchs are currently the single best points per money ratio out of any Space Marine kits that you can buy. I think the only things that beat them out are the starter sets or Leviathan if you split them 50 50 with a Tyranid player. Basically, for a price that's kind of similar to a squad of Intercessors, you get quite a lot more points than that on the board. Maybe not the worst idea in the world if you do want to make your way towards an army of any given size. Plus, I feel like the model sculpt itself is quite a fun one. Admittedly, his rules are maybe a bit underwhelming in-game at the moment, though it will depend on his final points cost. They certainly change over time. I feel like Primarchs are often one of the miniatures that Games Workshop tend to come back to with rules updates to try and keep interesting. Perhaps another particularly interesting squad for newer players to pick up, I think, are the Hellblasters. They're £37.50, €50 Euros or $60 for a squad of 10. Kind of nice for the Space Marines as they're fairly points intensive models in game but you get a whole 10 men of them, again getting you a slightly bigger chunk of the army than other kits would get you for the same price. Beyond that they're just easy to use in game in general, firepower that's at least going to worry just about everything plus combo well with certain units like Azrael or a lieutenant and I feel like they do okay for the Dark Angels as well, packing some of their iconic plasma weaponry. Speaking of Supreme Grandmaster Azrael as well, he is the chapter master for the Dark Angels and a fairly central figure beyond the Lion. Again, quite a nice recent sculpt with a Watcher in the Dark, and he's just really interesting at the moment in game terms, giving you a command point per turn, which makes him really handy to have in just about any army. But then beyond that, just giving you a spectacular amount of value for his own command abilities, a damage boost to his units with sustained hits, a 4 plus invulnerable save from the Lion Helm, and his own melee and shooting profile as well, which account for something beyond his leadership abilities. Basically at the moment for his 105 point points cost, he just really can't go too far wrong with him in just about any Space Marine list, whether he's leading something elite like Hellblasters or Stern Guard, or just something like some cheap intercessors. He's enough of a presence just in himself with his command points and his character bonuses, never mind the other bits. Otherwise, for some interesting combat patrol ways to add reinforcements to an army, you could look at combat patrol, space wolves or blood angels. Space wolves are of course the bitten rivals of the dark angels, dating back to their Primarchs fights during the heresy. This one gives you a character, 10 intercessors, 5 reavers, an invictor warsuit and 2 space wolf upgrade sprues. Probably not going to be first choice, but if you do like the look of the reavers and the invictor, could be one to consider. Personally, of other random chapters combat patrols though, I'd probably rate the Blood Angels one higher for the Dark Angels. That one gets you a Librarian, an Impulsor, a few Intercessors, and either Infiltrators or Incursors, plus a trio of Aggressors. I feel like for filling out a more green armoured Dark Angel segment of an army, this one might actually pair quite well with their current combat patrol. Could give you that Impulsor for the Hellblasters to ride around in, and also an Aggressor squad for the Gravis Captain to lead. 
Finally, for our kit focuses for getting an army together, there's this upgrade sprue as well. This one's the more recent one that came out in 10th edition, and I think is quite a lot more generous than the smaller Primaris one that they had before. Most of them are aesthetic bits, chapter symbols, and nice iconic hooded heads that's compatible with either the Deathwing Terminators or a whole bunch of various power armor marines. It's also the frame that's aimed at Deathwing Terminator squads themselves as well, giving you the Plasma Cannon War Gear option, plus the Watcher in the Dark to upgrade them with, and also does come with an expanded transfer sheet, handy to some. Usually I'm a bit down on the value of upgrade sprues from Gamers Workshop, but I feel like this one is probably better than most. For an optional extra purchase, it could be worth considering. Otherwise, as mentioned, I'd probably start with trying to get a core of a force together around one of those many, many value sets out there, plus think about a few other things that you might like, or a few of my other suggestions that I talked about just then. Just with collecting Warhammer 40k in general, I feel like there's always a load of scope for just collecting what you like the look of. 40k rules change all the time, points get updated, and units get better or worse, and the general thinking tends to be that models are things that you'll keep, rules might change, so maybe collect to the models and the awesome appearance of your things on the tabletop. Having said that though, there's certainly some things that can help out the army in-game, and most people want things to be at least somewhat playable. Perhaps the Space Marines in particular, and make sure that you've got at least some dangerous damage dealers to be able to take down enemy heavies, like say Terminators or vehicles. And there's something with big armor busting guns, hefty melee, or mass damage to say Terminator Power Fists or Hell Blasters. Ideally, at least some things that can take down things like enemy knights or massive tanks. I say, particularly with the discount kits for Space Marines, it's maybe easy to acquire quite a lot of guys with bolters or mid strength weapons, and at least start out with an initial army that's going to be a big threat to enemy lighter infantry but might struggle with tougher stuff. Otherwise, beyond that, for the Dark Angels, I'd likely have Azrael, at least some Terminators, and any other unique units that you think are fun or effective. But here are a few of the other more generic Space Marine picks that are kind of interesting, in my opinion. Some things for deploying the mid-board, things like infiltrators, eliminators or scouts. Perhaps some big dreadnoughts or tanks to do some heavy lifting, the Ballistus, Redemptor or Gladiator Lancer perhaps. The Repulsors are all fine. There's plenty of at least fairly interesting heavy infantry, Hellblasters, Eradicators, Blade Guard or Terminators. A bunch of the characters are at least playable, kind of depends on the unit, but maybe adding a lieutenant to a squad is one of the more reliable, easy ways of increasing damage. And just in general, there is a lot of strong stuff out of the Space Marine Codex. There is even the option of adding in some allies or agents, even if the Unforgiven are very wary to work with Imperial factions. Cheap Inquisitorial henchmen could be nice to just be able to stand on points and do secondary objectives for minimal investment. The Caladus Assassin can do the same jumping around the board, and Knight Armagers could add to the Armoured Threat, but you might be better off with more Dreadnoughts. I'd probably have a very rough idea for a 2000 point army list and work towards it, playing games and adapting as you go, maybe building up the army in small chunks. Finally, focusing on some rules and some example army lists. In Codex Dark Angels, you get three different detachments that you could play. If you want to go for the one that's supposed to represent more generalist, well rounded Dark Angels armies, you could go for the Unforgiven Task Force. That one I'd imagine is more themed around sort of green dark angels as opposed to being all in on Ravenwing or Deathwing. This one gets you Grim Resolve, an ability that means that you're very resistant to battle shock. Some handy enough shooting stratagems and an interesting enhancement called the Pennant of Remembrance that can give you a feel no pain on Terminator squads. That's quite nice. Though I must admit the detachment does feel very underpowered compared with the core codex detachment. There's a slightly weird obsession with your own units failing battle shock tests. Maybe to show that the Dark Angels are calm under pressure, but that won't happen most of the time anyway. I feel that saps a lot of power, even if you do have some interesting shooting buffs on offer. I think rather than this, unless you're going for full fluff and lore points, I'd be a bit more tempted to use the core Codex Space Ruin detachments. Maybe the Gladius Task Force, though Iron Storm, Vanguard and Firestorm are all fairly strong in game. Here's just one example of a success for more green Dark Angels focused army run by a JC Baron, using it to take second at Beachhead Brawl. Interestingly, this one is going for an Iron Storm Spearhead with a whole bunch of Space Marine vehicles. The only unique Dark Angels units here are Azrael and a Ravenwing Dark Shroud to provide some cover, but then you can absolutely make a force of Unforgiven armor work if you really want to. There's two armor-busting Gladiator Lancers, 
two big stompy redemptor dreadnoughts with macroplasmas, a storm speeder and a storm raven gunship. I guess that'd be delivering a big unit of stone guard with Azrael into the fight. Then there's some support for objectives and some tech marines. Certainly a more generic space marine vehicle army list compared with themed around the Dark Angels too much, but maybe just underlines that they can absolutely do well with the core codex. Otherwise, for Ravenwing themed armies, you've got the Company of Hunters. That one's core rule allows you to advance and shoot and fall back and shoot, so it keeps your plasma talons firing from your Black Knights on the move. Plus the Outrider standard Primaris biker squads also become battle line, so you can run six units of them should you wish to. As with other detachments, the stratagems are locked to Ravenwing. Plenty of interesting support and defensive and offensive tricks there, plus a whole bunch of enhancements that allow you to get alpha strikes on your enemy with the bikes in one form or another, being able to hit them before they hit you. For a different flavour of Ravenwing, you could also think about the Stormlands task force as well, as a focus a bit more on the assault elements of the bikes. Here's just one example from Games Workshop for a Ravenwing army that they featured on their community website recently. This one's just going all in on a biker themed army list. Two Ravenwing command squad, two units of six black knights, two dark shrouds to provide a bit of cover to the army, a couple of Nephilim jet fighter planes, and then no less than a big five squads of outriders, each with an invader ATV that you could choose the heavy weapon of. Definitely shows that you could do a full biker army if you'd want to. And it would be a kind of weird prospect to have quite so many tough biker bodies on the board. In reality though, I would say that this one isn't the most competitive army build that you could do. The planes are a little bit overcosted. Probably more than one Dark Shroud is a bit excessive. If anything, I'd probably go for more Black Knights and another Command Squad. And then swap out at least a few things for some support elements to sit on objectives for cheap. While your scary bikers go around destroying things. Finally for the Dark Angels detachments, there's the Inner Circle Task Force. This one supports everything with the Deathwing keyword, which would be the Terminators, plus Veterans, and a whole bunch of characters. And their core rule is the Vowed Target, allowing you to nominate one objective, and you get plus one to wound anything on that objective with your own units. A fairly brutal damage boost towards taking that one point on the board. Between that and the regular Oatha moment, you will be spitting out quite a lot more damage than you might expect. Otherwise, a few more notable things are stratagems for a deep strike anywhere that's just greater than 3 inches from the enemy. So you could have a big scary Deathwing unit just appear in the enemy's deployment zone. There's an enhancement to allow you to teleport in first turn as well, which is rather spooky. Could give you a big alpha strike there. And a couple of other fun supporting stratagems, including one to give you a further boost on your vowed targets. Between characters, data sheets, stratagems and the vowed target rule, you could be getting ridiculous damage if anything steps foot on an objective and you've got some terminators within reach of that. Again, here's just one themed list from Games Workshop themselves that they features. For a Deathwing army that's actually got perhaps a surprisingly small core of terminators, just 5 knights and 10 regular terminators, then for the rest they've chosen to go for other veterans, inner circle companions, blade guard, Firstborn Vanguard Veterans, Stern Guard Veterans, and some character support and some Repulsor Executioners. I feel like Games Workshop is maybe trying to reimagine the Deathwing Detachment a little bit for the Primaris era. I think personally for a more themed force, I'd be more tempted to go heavier on the Terminators than that. Currently, I think at time of recording, the overall power and best choices really do remain to be seen. It depends on the points cost they give to Deathwing Knights and the core Deathwing Terminator Squad, Currently, the standard Terminator squad in 40k is sort of seen as middling by plenty of Space Marine players, kind of rarely seen on tournament tables in anger. I feel like part of the appeal to playing Deathwing is just putting as many Terminator bodies on the board, and hopefully more than your opponent can deal with, just having loads of high toughness and high invulnerable saves to laugh off any small arms, and be really quite tanky to take out even with dedicated anti-tank firepower. In any case, those three should hopefully give you at least a few ideas for how you could put a force of Dark Angels together. The army really could be quite different, and it could absolutely mix and match a whole mix of the three of those, depending on exactly what sort of army you want. As for always, experienced Dark Angels players, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Any other tips that you'd have to teach new players who are just getting into the faction are well appreciated. Look forward to hearing any of your insights. If you'd like something else to watch, I'll link my Codex review and my review of the Deathwing Intended Edition down in the video description. 
You'll find that there alongside the various ways to support the channel, including those discount affiliate links to the third-party retailers. If you are looking to pick up some forces of the Unforgiven or other 40k stuff, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. I'll certainly be looking to cover the Dark Angels points when they're out and hopefully do a faction tier list. Fingers crossed Games Workshop can land the new data sheets in such a way that they're strong by costing them appropriately. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description below. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.